Mais pour cela, je dois savoir si vous avez vraiment retenu quelque chose aujourd'hui. Et on a une question pour vous. Qu'est-ce que ça veut dire le thé Khalil est en train de voir, genre je sais ce que ça veut dire. Qui va répondre Non Non Ben non Ben non Eh ben, je suis vraiment déçu parce que... Ben non Ben non, non plus Ben le thé représente le fondateur de Frédéric Hébert, Monsieur Klaus Peter, venez là sur scène Merci pour cette euh, introduction, mais effectivement, je ne suis pas fondateur, euh, je suis un simple homme accompagneur du, euh, du programme. Ok, pour changer. Ok, donc je vais essayer. Euh, C'est difficile à reprendre le fil du argument et euh, je suis forcé en même temps donner un peu de cohérence à tous nos débats. Nous avons eu beaucoup d'expériences, nous avons eu beaucoup de cas concrets et j'aimerais comme économiste professionnel que je suis, que je suis économiste et euh, euh, qui a fait toute la vie dans cette sphère, euh, résumer un peu sec. I start in English and he told me I should uh, talk in English, so I, I do it. In the economics we have a classical function which is the Cobb-Douglas function. You have the product and the product is made out of capital or a particular part of capital and labor plus X. It is more complex than this, but I have no alpha and beta and gamma to put it uh, correctly. I simply put it this way. It's not a mathematical uh, equation. Into this is obvious. If you go go to uh, to to Hong Kong, you see it's capital and labor, nothing more. Either a high Uh, buildings and workers and we have the X X we integrate all externalities which we can't measure or which we can't identify ou de faire ou n'importe quoi and labor is working hard laying bricks assembling cars and so on and so on And now we look into labor. No. Some people put things together. Others sell the product. Others design some as some people have shown. Others organize and manage as Mestic is organizing this, uh, this, this, this organization. Other people research. Others think, innovate, put the production process in the other way around. Because if we continue to do the same exercise lifelong, we will end up dead. So we have to think about producing the other way around. They are creative. They are agents of change. And when I was reasoning about the word ISEC, I, I found it fits easily into the other form 
agents in intelligence of economic, social, environmental change. C'est ça l'avenir. The C is classical commercial, but finally commercial is change at the same time. Commerce and change are the same uh, items. And now we get into uh, the, the capital. We have a set of machines and buildings and infrastructure. And you have some heavy industries which we call as economists Leontief type of fixed inputs and variables. You know it, I, uh, who is economist in this uh, uh, assembly? Not really much, oh yes, three, four. Uh, Leontief type, he, he has said, if you want to create uh, uh, iron ore, you have to have uh, a machine plus energy, X energy plus uh, X uh, laborers plus uh, X railways, and then you get 50 tons of uh, something. This is the classical Leontief type, and this Leontief was a Soviet uh, uh, economist, he analyzed his own economy and he developed the, the Leontief type of fixed variables in the production. And some variables are distorted either by administrative things or by market forces, either by monolo mo monopoly, oligopoly, or public pricing or subsidies. If you have a subsidy for bread, as it is the case here, then you will have, have an increased consumption of bread. You can't complain about the import of wheat if you subsidize the bread. Then either you reduce the subsidies of bread and you will have less wheat imported, otherwise it won't work. But you find two and this is the point, what we call in the classical economic analysis, the Schumper Schumpeterian type of innovator. This man who challenges the given structure of the economic process and says, okay, I have done this type of car 25 years, but it is time to change. And he introduces the technological change. He destroys the old structure to put a new structure on the place. And this is what we call progress. And then we have externalities. We can't measure it. Or we take them for free. Oxygen, oxygen is considered to be free. We don't know how long but one day it will be priced. And sometimes in Tokyo you can already uh, buy a bottle of oxygen in order to improve the, the atmosphere in your house. Carbon dioxide emission was considered to be free because the car was issuing carbon dioxide and everyone was running around but we know now it's not free. It has a price. And climate was considered to be free, but we now know it's not free. It changes rapidly. Social cohesion was considered to be free, but we, know, we now know either in the industrial countries in the suburban cities or wherever, if the social cohesion is put, destroyed, it is not free, it is a very costly good, as a matter of fact. Culture and science in general was considered or is free. University, free university, uh, free uh, universal education and so on. But as a matter of fact, it is a very high-priced product, and we have to take it into consideration. So, evidently, 
this is not true that the things which the externalities are free we have to put shadow prices on them we have to give them some value to put in into our production function therefore our production function in france in germany in algeria in mauritius in madagascar has to be rewritten we have the depletion effect we know at our given knowledge we have an, another 50 years with gas and uh, oil in algeria but we know after some times we have to look into alternatives so the depletion effect must be calculated in our relative pricing system if this does not is not done we will be in the rain one day without alternatives so we have the depletion effect we have the human rights of future generation is it legitimate that we eat up all and leave the next generation without resources uh, we have now so to speak three types of human rights we have the human right of the first generation nobody should be in prison and there's a free uh, expression of your 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 will and your political conviction this is the first generation the second generation of human rights is that you should have a decent life for yourself decent work decent life decent housing decent water and so on and there is a third generation of human rights to respect the future the rights of the future generation so this has to be taken into our production function too. If we don't do it, we, we, uh, we calculate incorrectly. We have to see the health aspects. We see all different aspects from bronchitis to other effects from, uh, from pollution or whatever aspects of social cohesion this is necessary intrinsic values of human mankind your home could it be sold for the production function la patrie la nation est-ce qu'on peut sacrifier la nation sur uh, sur uh, la production function we have to take into this into consideration too our good neighborhood not everything could be sold or invested for goods or gratis in the production function. Where do we stand in Algeria? I've put uh, on the left side uh, the classical cycles. Uh, this is what we call quadratic cycles in, in economic theory. Every 50 years, the large structure of economics are changed. We have the steam engine, we have the chemin de fer acier, nous avons chemistry and engineering, we have petrochemicals, mass motorization, and we are now in the fifth cycle, which is called information. And we see it here quite nicely. This is the new Kondrachev cycle of world development. And in Algeria, we have had a development of fast forward, I call it. We did it, reduced, we had the agrarian reform under Bembella, we did the Bumidien heavy industries, central planning, Soviet type, second and, and third Kondrachev at the same time. And we have 1980, the petro industries and the fourth Kondrachev. And now, which way to choose for Algeria? And this is the challenge of, I say, today or tomorrow of the young generations. And the fifth Kondrachev is characterized by information, computer, software, soft power, organization, 
efficiency, sustainability, smart instead of big and strong. Small is beautiful was the first, uh, the first uh, idea. Now we have the idea of putting things in a smart way. The challenge for you as young leadership here all together is Maîtrise technique du troisième et quatrième quadrature. You will be the leaders in your factories, for sure, or in administration or in government. But you have to see how the fifth quadrature attacks the third and the fourth. And you have to in innovate. You have to change your own logic within the given structure. Change of paradigm with respect to the development path. How to introduce this innovation? We have done one exercise this afternoon or today or together. We have to continue. Since 95, we think of what we call factor four economy. Double welfare, but divide by two the consumption in nature. Quadruple energy efficiency, using bus instead of private cars. Quadruple raw material efficiency, recycle, and we have seen recycle old paper into new paper, quadruple transport efficiency. These are things which we have to look into our pro production process and where we have market forces and relative pricing working each other. If you have subsidized gasoil a, a, and energy prices, you will not come to a reasonable production function and change the content of gross national product into gross quality of life index. This is the issue and we have seen uh, in your contribution what this could mean to a new society. And this is what I simply put uh, in front of you as your challenge, as Isaac people, uh, agents in innovation and intelligence and economic, social, environmental, ecological, ecological change. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. It was an awesome presentation. And personally, for me, you will stay Mr. T for TEDx forever. Really, it's an honor for me that you are here with us. Thank you so much. Applaudissez, Monsieur Le Hospital. Merci.